there's a major shift happening in AI first development right now. And if you've been watching my channel, you know I've been talking about this for months. Spec driven development. This is how professional builders move away from the unpredictability of vibe coding into a workflow that actually ships. It's a methodical approach that takes your product from idea to customer consistently. And for me as a business owner and a product designer, it's what has me fired up about this moment. We're not just changing how we code, we're changing how we build. So a few months ago on this channel, I introduced spec driven development along with agent OS. That's my free open source system for powering a spec driven process. And now we're seeing the big tool makers are converging on the same realization that a spec driven approach is the way. And I love this direction that we're going in as an industry. Just this week, GitHub launched their spec kit project. Amazon recently released Kiro, which is built around planning with specs. Cursor added some task tracking stuff to their UI. Claude Code has had planning mode. So we're seeing this spec driven approach make its way into the mainstream tools. And again, the industry is broadly getting on the page that specs are essential, but the tooling and process behind spec driven development is still pretty unsettled. And honestly, that's good. We're all still figuring out what it means to build in the AI first era. Today, I wanna to examine spec driven development in the real world, because there are three critical aspects that I think the mass market tooling is still missing. And if we don't address these, AI adoption with our teams will continue to be an uphill battle. I'm Brian Castle. I help professionals stay ahead with practical AI strategies. And every week I send out my builder briefing. That's a five minute read to help keep you sharp. You can get yours by going to buildermethods.com. And subscribers are always the first to hear about my next live workshop where we talk about what's working with AI. So for the last few months, as I've been applying spec driven development in my own products and watching the tooling evolve, I've noticed three fundamental problems that most tools aren't addressing. And these are things that I try to solve as I iterate on Agent OS, and I'll show you how I use that to make my specs actually useful. So the first issue is a lack of process for establishing alignment. So most tools just expect you to show up with a prompt and generate a spec, as if they inherently know what you want and how that's supposed to fit in the bigger picture of your product. But we don't just wake up knowing what to build. Even when we know what the next feature on our roadmap is, there's still a crucial phase before creating the spec. And that involves deciding on the right approach, hashing out the trade-offs, the design decisions, the edge cases, your product strategy. Because we know there are always multiple ways to build the same feature. The question is which way is best for your product and your customers. So the newest version of Agent OS doesn't rush into writing your specs. Instead, first it has your agent work with you on ideation and strategic planning. This foundational context is critical if you want agents to build in alignment with your vision. Let me show you what this looks like. So I'm working on a simple app called Flashcards so that I can quiz my kids on their homework assignments. And in here in the Agent OS folder, I have my specs folder. Now I've already built out the first uh, feature and that's the finished spec right there. So let's go ahead and start the next spec. I've got Claude code open here and I'm going to start with new spec. I'm just going to run the new spec command. Now, if you're familiar with agent OS, you know that I already have my uh, product plan with the roadmap and mission built in. So uh, agent OS did reference that and it's asking me if I want to uh, just build the next item in my roadmap and I can check my roadmap here. So we've already built out uh, these two parts and now we need to build out the question builder interface for multiple choice questions. Let's go with that. So now it's using sub agents for every step in the process if you're using Claude code, which supports sub agents. And you can see that we've now built out the folder for the next spec, that's the question builder interface, and we're initializing here. Okay, so now it has passed the baton onto the spec researcher sub agent, and that one is here to help me research and plan and hash out the details for this new feature before we even get into writing the spec. So as you can see, it came up with a list of clarifying questions. It uh, looks like we have nine of them. I just want to point out that built into Agent OS, I've instructed the agent to analyze my mission, my product roadmap, my standards, and the initial idea for what this feature is going to be, and then to come up with clarifying questions. Specifically, I told it to number them, which is going to make it easy for me to just answer, you know, number one answer, number two answer, number three. 
The other thing that I said was I wanted to ask the questions and then provide a sensible assumption as the probable answer to the questions. And that makes it really easy for me to just do things like number one, yes. Number two, yes. Number three, let me course correct a little bit. Number four, yes. So, you know, just making the process of planning and ideating and hashing out a little bit easier than for me to have to come up with these questions on my own. And one more tip, I also emphasized the importance of referencing pre-existing design elements and architectural elements in the code base itself um, when it's coming up with these questions. And uh, as you can see down here, we have a section where it asks me literally, are we gonna be reusing any existing code or you know components in the uh, code base? So this is all really important planning material that should go into the process. So let me go through and uh, answer these questions. Okay, so I've added my answers to questions one through nine. As you can see, it's really easy for me to just confirm the uh, assumption that the agent made and make some very minor uh, course corrections. I forgot to add the note about uh, existing reuse. Um, so I'm saying like reuse our existing styling around the, the existing questions UI that we have. And then there's one final thing that Agent OS asks for now. We have a visuals folder and this is optional, but if you have any sort of mockups or wireframes, now is a great time to put them into the planning. Agents work so much better when they get to follow an actual visual reference. And uh, I do have a very simple um, rough wireframe I'm gonna just drop that into the visuals folder. So we have that in the planning for this spec. And we also have it built in to recognize whether this is a detailed mockup versus just a rough wireframe. In this case, it's gonna know that it's a wireframe. Okay, so I think we're good on my initial questions and I'm gonna send those along. All right, so we're not done yet. Uh, the agent just analyzed both my answers to the first set of questions, and it took a look at the wireframe that I provided it, and it came up with a couple additional clarifying questions just to really make sure that we're on the same page. It noticed something that I put into my visual wireframe, and it wants to confirm the direction here. It even pointed out that I forgot to mock up a detail to you know, select which is the default answer. And again, it worded them in ways that make it really easy for me to quickly respond. It says like, would you like to do it this way or that way? And I can just say option A, you know? Okay, so the spec researcher's work is done and let's see what we have so far. So again, we're, we're inside the spec folder. We have not created the actual spec yet, but so far we have this planning folder. Inside that we've got our visual, that's our wireframe. And we have this initialization this is just very simple, this, you know, just to record my very first direction. And then we have this requirements document. It, it just serves as a reference and a record of the discussion that we had. Each question that the agent asked me, uh, what my answers were, and, um, and it has the follow-up questions. It, you know, references some existing code and it has some notes on the visual assets and it analyzed them and, and gave itself some notes on what it found, some visual insights functional requirements. So again, I can like even go through here and just double check that all these details are in fact correct. You know, I might check things like, did I actually answer the right thing? Or do I want to rethink certain details about how this feature should be designed? Or I might want to check to see the agent actually interpreted what I had to say correctly, because a lot of this stuff is, you know, notes in the agent's words, not mine. I'll go through and double check these. But again, like this is sort of like the raw material, the strategic and design decision making that together we've come up with. And now it's sort of in the context, but we also have it documented here in the folder. So now I can proceed with the actual creation of the spec with much higher confidence that the content of the spec is going to be exactly what I want. Look, this is where our craft happens now. Of course, we know how our code is going to fit together, but our agents can build most of that. Where we bring value is through design and our taste and experience and understanding what our customers need. That happens here in the planning phase. All right, now, while the spec writer sub-agent is writing up our spec, I want to talk about the second big issue that I'm seeing, and that's missing context about your standards. So in order to write specs that ensure agents will build correctly the first time, we need granularity about how the code should be written. So just telling our agent to build a React app or build a Rails app, that's not enough. There are countless variables. Your tech stack, your code style, your existing libraries, established patterns, components, layouts that you've already developed. 
We need our specs to instruct our agents to adhere to all of these directions. And we can't just assume that their quick code base scan is gonna pick up everything. We also can't just retrain our agents on every new feature that they develop because then we're just back to prompting in circles. So as I've shown in my previous videos covering Agent OS, it lets you define your coding standards and your design choices and your common patterns once. So when your specs get written and your code gets implemented, your agents already have that knowledge baked in. So it looks like our spec is almost ready. The spec writer finished its work and now it passed the baton onto our spec verifier, which is checking the spec writer's work, making sure that it's all accurate, that we uh, crossed our T's and dotted our I's, if you will. And that's all set. So here is everything that it did. So let's go ahead and take a look. So now we have our official spec.md. Now I used to have a much more complex version of this, but I purposely had the agent simplify it down to just a one pager. We've got the goal, we've got a couple of user stories, some functional requirements, some non-functional requirements. Uh, then we have some notes on the visual design referencing the, uh, the visual that I had provided. We're also calling out to some reusable components that already exist in the code base so that you know the agent can leverage those and not rebuild the same thing twice. We've got some notes on the technical approach. This is intentionally not going into great detail because you know we still wanna let the actual coding agent and the specialist sub agents that are going to be uh, responsible for these items sort of do their thing rather than leading them down potentially the wrong path up front. So you know this is just the high level specification but it is highly accurate. As you can see, there are now multiple layers at play here. We did the initial, Q&A and clarifying and, and hashing out of the details. Then it went through and, and created the, uh, the specification, which also took into account my standards that are built into Agent OS. And we had the verifier agent come in and, and look at it all. And now I'm putting my human eyes on it as well. So we've got our spec and then we have our tasks. So this is the actual task list that would be implemented once we get to the implementation phase. It is broken out into task groups, each with a main parent task and some subtasks. The other thing that you'll notice is that Agent OS is suggesting which sub agent, like in this case, doing the database updates, that's gonna to go to the database engineer sub agent and getting down into the API layer, that'll go to the API engineer. Um, so we're grouping these into groups of tasks that individual sub agents can tackle sort of like separately. And that'll be really useful when it comes to implementation. You know, here we're gonna work on the UI, so we're gonna to delegate to the UI designer sub agent. So, you know, Agent OS 2.0, when you're using it with cloud code, is gonna be heavily built around this idea of orchestrating multiple sub agents to pick off each individual uh, task group when it comes to implementation. Now, of course, I can still review these tasks. I can even review which agent it's planning on delegating to. Um, and these are things that I can tweak and change on the fly. Like this particular feature might be built a little bit differently than the last feature that I built. Or I might be doing things a little bit different in this project versus a different project. And so Agent OS gives me that flexibility to spin up different types of sub agents and incorporate them into my process in different ways depending on the project. And in fact, that brings me to the third and I think the most important factor when it comes to real world adoption of these AI tools and spec driven development. And that is the tooling can't be too rigid about defining our development process. Because look, we all build differently. Your team might take an API first approach. Mine might emphasize UI first. You might have 30 engineers in a department or she might be working at a startup with three co-founders. His team over there might have multiple testing phases. Hers prioritizes getting a product out to customers quickly. And each feature in your product might be built a little bit differently. One might involve a lot of API and database changes, and the next feature might focus more on UI, and the one after that might just concern the mobile app. Each spec involves different sub-agents and a different mix of phases in your development process. You know, if your tooling adds friction as you or your team is moving between different features, different products, that can prevent full adoption of spec-driven development. And then you'll miss out on the benefits and the leverage that AI-first development has to offer. So in designing the newest version of Agent OS, one of my goals is to make it as adaptable as your development process requires. It leverages sub-agents and orchestration that you can control as you move between specs. 
So I'll be sharing my latest patterns in spec-driven development and in Agent OS in my next live workshop and in my Builder Briefing newsletter. So you can get on that by going to buildermethods.com. And speaking of patterns, now that we're rethinking what it means to build and ship products, it's easy to lose that sense of flow that we used to have when we were deep in our code bases before all these AI agents came along. But I think it's still possible to achieve that flow state, which can lead to breakthroughs in your product. You can see my recent video on finding flow with spec-driven development. And so after you hit that subscribe button, head over there, check that one out next, and let's keep building.